Should I comb my hair? <laughs> it's up to you. I want a banana. <laughs> <laughs> So, Eno, <laughs> how old are you? I'm 55. And how long have you been living outside? All my life. Really? Yeah. Even when you were a kid? All my life. Wow. I was eight, nine, seven, and I was already from house to house to house, friends. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Were you with your parents doing that? My mom was there, but uh, she tried to force me to go to school, and I always got bullied, and so I wouldn't stay at the house because she would call the police, or the school and the principal used to come to the house. Mm -hmm. So when did you start living on your own? Well, I finished my GED and then um, my, one of my mom's sisters, uh, my aunt, um, she encouraged me to go back to school. And so I did. I ended up going to Western Tech uh, Institute uh, as a welder. That's where I got my welder certification. So I became somebody. How long did you work as a welder? Good, 56 years. I'm 55. <laughs> Looking for another year. <laughs> I'm a good welder. There is no welder like me. I'll do any welder. I beat Speedy Gonzalez or Fast Eddie. I mean, all these characters. <laughs> <laughs> I am my welder, and I don't mean to be sarcastic or outgoing, but I am who I am, and mm -hmm. you know what? I outperform. They think I'm on drugs, so they UA me. It's just my adrenaline. I go. I could do a 12-foot weld nonstop. When these guys were doing two feet, two feet, two feet, two feet, two feet, two feet, two feet. Mm -hmm. And I would do a 12 foot weld without stopping. Hello. Even my form is like, damn. We've never seen this before. So when's the last time that you were paid for a welding job? Uh, back in June yeah. of this year, 2022, cool. uh, I was working for Chiefs Manufacturing. Uh, they hated me because I quit. Mm. <laughs> Why'd you quit? My hands were swelling. I don't know why. I think because I was on medications and I took a reaction. Oh. And that's my my uh, theory. theory. Yeah. And so, and I think it had to do that. Oh, uh, shoot! I I got a sleeping disorder, so I wasn't taking my sleeping pills just to, because I had to be at work at four thirty in the morning. You know, and then get off at uh, five. Wow. So something happened with my medications and not thinking that my hands started swelling and hurting. Yeah. I couldn't sleep at night. I couldn't sleep. So I told them about it. They gave me a week off and then I went back a week and my hands were still swollen mm. and I quit. I just walked off. I just said, bye. Was that the last paying job that you had? Yeah, I was earning 1200 a week. Wow. Was there a time in your adult life where you had your own place or anything? I, I had my apartment. Yeah. Low income housing. Oh, okay. I worked that out $50 a month. Wow. What more? 
but my hands got swollen. I mean, swollen. I was mutating. Weird. So, you said you grew up in El Paso? Yes, that's my hometown. When did you leave there? 2015, oh, okay. when my mom died. 2015 was the worst year of my life. In January, I got stabbed seven times. And I moved over to El Paso, my hometown. That, that was in Abilene. I got stabbed seven times. I survived it. And um, I ended up in El Paso, my hometown. And a car ran me over. I was underneath the car all over a block, and the guy stopped. He must have figured, where is he at? He was looking at his mirrors because he backed up, and I let go of the bumper. I was underneath. And then he took off, and everybody seen this, and so they picked me up, put me on the side of the sidewalk, and uh, from there, I spent two and a half months in the hospital wow. recuperating. I get out four days and I'm trying to walk. My doctor recommended me to try to walk my leg. So I walked to the store. My mom says, no, I'll go get you cigarettes. No, I'll, I'll get them on. And I walked. But then by the time I got there, my leg just not. I couldn't walk anymore, so I, I figured I'll go through an alley. You know. mm -hmm. Anyways, I walked through this alley and this dude's getting on. He comes out and he starts, he gets up, he's like yelling and blah, blah, blah. And I'm over here with a cane, my leg all bandaged up. He kicked my cane and then kicked my knee and I fell and kicked me eight times in the face. Oh my gosh. That's why I lost all my teeth. I was left unconscious. So four days after I get out of the hospital, I'm back in the hospital. Oh man. <laughs> Anyways, they had to do surgery. I got a, a plastic plate. Otherwise my face would have, uh, I can't even smile. It look, does it look like a smile? <laughs> no, it looks like a grin. I'm back in the hospital. And then I get out, and then Mother's Day, May, May, my sister picks my mom up, takes her to her house for Mother's Day. Mm -hmm. So it's me, my stepdad, my, my sister at the house, Mother's Day. And mom's not there. My sister took her. And mom passed away. That day? And mother's day. Oh. And we're like, where's she at? And I said, uh, and I took off. I, I started trying to walk on my leg and, you know, I was drinking. And my, I called the house and my sister, my younger sister picks up the phone and says, she's crying. I'm going, what the fuck? Uh, what's wrong? Mom passed away. What? Yeah. And he buried her without our consent as well. Within a week. Wow. <laughs> and so I go to the house like four days later and my sister, my younger sister is having a party. <laughs> at my mom's house. And I'm going, what the fuck? And I'm like, I'm going to burn this bitch down. I'm going to, I was going to burn my mom's house down. But my sister's boyfriend, me and him got into it. And they called the cops. And I went to jail. I did 90 days. So May, June, July, August, I got out. Wow. My brother, my older brother, 
He says, you know, let it be. If there is a God, he'll fix it. But let it be. He gave me some money. He, he goes, you, you're a traveler. You know, hop on the train. Get the fuck out of here, dude. God will work this out. And I did get on the train. And I left. And that's why I'm known. <laughs> so where'd you go next? Cheyenne, Wyoming. Mm -hmm. And I seen an ad in the paper that uh, they needed uh, laborers moving furniture. So I called. And this is where mom comes into place. Okay. She's my mom. Well, anyways, I worked for her, right? And I needed money. I didn't get paid. And I'm like, Ma, I kept calling, calling, calling. So I ended up at her house and her porch. And I just railed up, railed my bedroll, and I snuck in. And it snowed. I didn't even know it was going to snow. And it snowed, but I heard a car come in. And I like got up and I'm like, I'm buried in snow. <laughs> and she goes, you know? And I go, <laughs> come on, get inside, get inside. And from there on, it was November. And me and her, three days on the 20th to like the 23rd, we cooked. I helped her cook. And that day, all her family showed up, workers, like, there must have been about 50 people that showed up at her house. But she introduced me. She got a glass to clean, clean. She says, before we start, I want to introduce you to somebody. This is Eno. And he lost his mom from today. He gained a mom. He's my new adopted son. And you met her from the ad, you said? Well. And she's been my mom since. Aww. She pays my phone every month. She gave me $50 yesterday. She's my mom. Not even my mom would have done that. Really? My real mom. Oh. But anyhow, back at the ranch, we made it so far. <laughs> So what were your dreams and goals as a child when you were growing up? Not being bullied. Yeah. Um, having a bike. Like a pedal bike or a motorcycle? A uh, pedal bike. Oh, okay. My brother had a bike. <laughs> and he was like, oh, and all, I mean, me, my cousins, my sister, we were just watching him go because he got a brand new bike. And all of a sudden, he parked it. And he went inside to get a glass of water or something. And this one guy came over and got it and failed him. Oh, wow. He just stole oh. his bike. And then he comes out, where's my bike? Oh. It went that way. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. You see, my grandma, ow, my, ow. My grandma raised my brother. And so... She, he was so spoiled. My mom, my grandma always had money because remember she was a curandera. She was a witch doctor. She always had clientele. Uh, she was 20 people a day to cleanse. So my brother got a brand new bike and, the, and so he went in and got a glass of water or something. This guy comes over and grabs it, boom, takes it was funny. He deserved it. He bought a Continental. A Continental. Remember the big old car Continentals? I, I wouldn't know personally. They're like but. so long. <laughs> okay. A four door. Mm -hmm. He bought it and he would polish it. He took it. One night he drove downtown. And he must have been bragging about it. He comes out, his car is gone. Oh no. Like his bike. He lost his bike, he lost 
<laughs> his car. Wow. Ah. But anyways, back at the ranch, we ate. <laughs> Everything turned right. So I know you have your your mom, but do you have a relationship with anybody that you're blood related to as of now? You mean as uh, like your brothers and sisters or? I haven't gone back to El Paso since 2015 because remember I got out of jail. Mm -hmm. uh, within the scuffle, we broke a piece of furniture, and I have to I had to do 280 hours of community service. I had to pay 280 restitution and probation, and I left. And I can't go back. You haven't talked because, to any of them since? No. Because if I go back, I'm going to go to jail. Right. So, mom's gone, so there's no purpose for me going back. Fair enough. I mean, the only one is my brother. So how would you describe your life right now? <laughs> or your lifestyle, if you want to put it that it's way? It's a scribble. There ain't no life. I'm still in the same boat I've been since. Even though I've gone to, I went to 13 schools. Wow. And yet I got my GED, and yet I got my diploma for welding, and yet I worked and worked, and I'm still in the same boat. I'm used to it. Right. Shit, since I was eight, nine, I was house to house. Now I'm an adult. Now I'm town to town, state to state. Nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. Well, if you could change anything, what are some of the things that you'd want to change? The war in Ukraine. Yeah. Russia is coming. You can smell it. If I could change that, that's what I would change. Make it peace. What do you think has been the greatest gift that someone has given you out of kindness? I was working through a tent place in Sioux City, Iowa, and it was a Saturday, and there was no, no work, and it was winter, so I was just drinking, walking around, snow, walking around, and I, back in the day, I didn't carry nothing but just layers. Mm -hmm. I would sleep under a bridge. But I made sure I had a good coat and, and thermals, you know. And then if I did get cold, I would walk two, three hours and then sleep again. So, but it was a Saturday. And this Hispanic fella stopped and he had a vehicle. He goes, hey, how you doing? I'm okay. Would you like a cup of coffee or something? I said, yeah. Come on. So I got in his car, and he did got me a cup of coffee, and we drove around. And I said, you know what, can we stop at a liquor store? Because I ran out of vodka. <laughs> he said, sure. And this is the city, mm -hmm. Iowa. And uh, he goes, you know what, he says, would you like to spend the night in my place? I live in Wayne. Nebraska. Hmm. And it's not too far, it's like 30, 40 miles. Okay. And I go, sure, why not? You know, I, I was thinking, sure, I could use a wink, you know, sleep. Mm -hmm. Sure enough, he worked nights at a dairy. He, he milked cows. Wow. <laughs> he had a dairy. So he gave me $50 that day. He gave me $50, he told me there's a store down the ways, you can get whatever you want. And I did, I went over. 
and there was a store. So I bought tortillas, corn tortillas, I bought uh, hamburger meat, cheese, uh, vegetables like uh, uh, tomatoes, onions, peppers. What I did, I made enchiladas and I cooked all night. He got off at six in the morning. And I went and bought me a case of beer and a big old fifth of vodka, but I was cooking. I cooked refried beans with cheese, Mexican rice, and enchilada salad. And I passed out on the couch, and um, he walked in with another dude, six o'clock in the morning. Hey, you know, oh, and I woke up, oh, hi, buddy. And I go, are you hungry, Mr. Oi? I cooked. I go, and he goes, no, ho, ho, ho. Come outside. So we went outside. There was a 1972 Ford pickup. The day he met me, the day after, he goes, here, this is your truck. Wow. And I'm like, huh? Yes, this is your truck. Now let's go back inside. What did you cook? <laughs> That was the best moment of my life. And how long did you have that truck for? A week. Wow. I fell in and bad Oh, no. <laughs> I, because I was working in Pender at American Tryon mm -hmm. uh, welding. And I stayed that night. I, I went to a local bar mm -hmm. and I met a couple. And they were buying me beers. I was buying them and they were buying back. And I mean, I slept in my truck. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. So six o'clock, I needed to go to work. I work, woke up at five, so I'm, I'm heading, and I missed the darn little exit. I missed it, and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go reverse forward, reverse forward, reverse forward, and reverse. Whoa! I ended up in a fucking embankment. Oh no! So I go to the company, and I'm knocking on the fucking door because it was fucking cold and they, they had the radio on so loud they couldn't hear me so I'm like fuck either I walk over to my truck which was in the back man or I started trying to open vehicles and I found a truck there was the door was open and I fucking got in there and I passed out before I know it somebody's knocking at the window and I hold the window it, it was the sheriff. And I go, hey, do you know you're in somebody's vehicle? I go, oh, yes, sir, yes, sir. I know, I work here. And then the guy goes, yeah, he works here. I said, I'm sorry, but I just, my truck got, I, I got stranded. And my, I ended up in a bag. Well, you can't have, we can't have that. So he says, come on. So he puts me, we, he didn't handcuff me or nothing. We drove to the jail. He says, he deputized me that day. <laughs> he goes, I have to, I'm not arresting you, but you gotta raise your right hand. I got to deputize you because you're not getting arrested. All you're gonna do is sleep in. And he, I took an oath. And I slept in their jail in the morning. I get this heavy, big, heavy set lady in jail. Mr. Castaneda, wake up, here's your breakfast. I mean, ham, eggs, sausage, coffee, eggs, you name it. <laughs> Eat away, because you got to go to work. Pender, Nebraska. <laughs> I got deputized. I went to work. At the end of the shift, I met another friend of mine, and so they're trying to pull my truck out. Mm -hmm. But they're doing it wrong. They did it on purpose. It blew a, a seal. So I I walked all the way from Pender to Wayne. It took me like eight hours. And once I got there the next day, me and him, my partner, they gave me the truck. He says, you know what, you know, you can use my car to go back to Fort And I go, no, just take me back to Sioux City. So, but we pulled the truck out and we took it to the junkyard. And, 
they gave us fifty dollars. He gave me that fifty dollars, and I said, "Just take me back to my city. city." And that was the end of that. Wow. But I got deputized. <laughs> I'm in the Orcas too, over in Dallas, Texas, by the mayor of Dallas. I they honored me the best worker for the summer. <laughs> when was that? Nineteen eighty. Nineteen eighty. TYC Texas Youth Commission. Mm -hmm. The state got me for being a delinquent, and they put me in a. They, sent me all the way from El Paso to a halfway house over in Dallas, Texas. So during the summer, they had a summer work program, the whole state, mm -hmm. in Dallas. And we're at the Course Auditorium. The mayor's there, the president of the organization, all the bosses, because they had different places where people work, but the mayor. And we're at the course auditorium, you know, and they're giving awards. And I'm 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 falling asleep and this is boring for me. No. <laughs> and I'm nodding. And then one of them nods I like or I fell asleep. And at the end they say, we're going to award the best worker for this summer. And I'm asleep. <laughs> I passed out. I swear to you, Sunflower, I passed out at the end. I was like, fuck this. And I passed out. I'm like, boy. And all of a sudden, they awarded the best worker for the summer that year. And then they, they, they anointed me. And my friends are like, you know, you know, wake up, fuck. And I'm like, huh? <laughs> I mean, I wake up and say, get up, fucker, get up. They just announced you, what? And they're like, everybody's applauding and everything at the course auditorium. <laughs> and I'm like, get up. They're telling me, get up, walk down the aisle, fucker. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm half asleep. <laughs> so I get up. <laughs> And I'm walking down, and I'm like, boy, I'm, 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 I'm looking at the owls. <laughs> and uh, the mayor, that's the first one that I shook hands with. He shook my hand. The president of the organization shook my hand. My boss shook my hand. And then we all signed a certificate, one certificate. that said, best contributions to Inu Castaña, for outstanding workmanship. And I'm in the archives. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Boy. <laughs> Is that something that you're really proud of? I didn't mean in it. In your life? I yeah. Didn't, I didn't mean it. No. <laughs> I was that was me. Boy. I was half asleep. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that you're proud of? About anything you've I'm accomplished? I'm proud of you. Being Thank my you. friend. Thank you, Sunflower. Thank you. <laughs> That's how I'm proud. But I want to talk about you. Are you proud of anything that you've done? Or just a piece of who you are? Well, there was one Christmas that I had a lot of money. I was panhandling. Mm -hmm. And I was buying toys, 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 toys. And I was giving them to every child that I would see. Little girl, little boy. Boy, 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 boy. <laughs> that year, I, I got like 1,200. And I bought toys. And I was giving them out to every child that I would see. That's awesome. Arlington. Arlington, Texas. Are you happy with who you are? No. No, really not. Excuse me. Okay. One more? No, thank you. No. Because 
I'm strive so hard. And I'm still in the same fucking boat. I'm floating. I've got one coconut left to eat. I'm in the middle of the ocean. I'm afraid of the water because of the sharks. I look up and I'm like looking for God. He's there, but why is it that he doesn't change it? Do you equate where you are in life with who you are? Partially, it's my fault because I drink so much. If if that element wasn't there, mm -hmm. I believe I could have been somebody else. But even though that element's there, everywhere I work, it hasn't been an issue. But, um, I believe if I didn't drink, I would be somebody else. So, so you'd say that probably drinking is the thing that keeps you from being happy with who you are? I'm happy when I'm drinking. Yeah. That's the only element that keeps me going. Otherwise, really, sincerely, if I didn't have a joy, where would I be? I tried suicide twice. I was going to jump off a, uh, off a bridge, and I took pills twice. Why did God save me that day? I was, I got up on the rails. And I was going to jump off a bridge. Who and why he got me before? Wow. And then I took the pills. I woke up sicker and shit. To this day, I got a ringing in my ears. Wow. And the third time, I engulfed myself in gasoline. I went and bought a bottle of Jack Daniels, a fit, mm -hmm. a zip of lighter, a three gallon tank, two quarts of oil, filled it up with fuel, and I started drinking. I finished the bottle within an hour. Wow. And I started. And then my old lady come up. What are you doing? Get inside, come on. So I take off my clothes off and I jump in the shower. And then I heard she was calling the police. Shit, I got her out of the shower, put my clothes on again and ran out. Casa Grande, Arizona. And I had an old timer. He was like my dad. He was there when uh, the Japanese bombed uh, Pearl Harbor. Wow. And uh, he was like my dad. He called me the kid. I was the, he, that was my nickname, the kid. He called me kid, kid. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I ran over to his place. Said, What's that smell? You know, you smell like fuel. I said, Mom, the cops are after me. And sure enough, right there, not even a minute, the cops were like with flashlights everywhere. Come on outside. And I'm like, no. And then, Come on outside. I said, well, hold, let me at least smoke a cigarette. And they go, no, no. <laughs> I wouldn't, it wouldn't let me. Right. I was that drunk. Wow. And uh, I, I stepped outside and the fire department was there. It was so embarrassing because they took all my clothes off. And the neighbors, I mean, everybody, they were hosing me down, <sighs> butt naked in front of everybody. 
that's the last time I've seen my kids and So you were with your kid's mom when that happened? Yeah, well, she moved. That's the thing, and I found. I even got a job where I could see my kids go to from school. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but then she moved. How old were they? were they the last time that you saw them? Yeah, she, my daughter was seven, my son was five. The last time I seen my daughter, I was on the third floor at a construction site. The school was right up front. And I go, hi, mom. I go, hi, dad. And I'm like, I love you. She goes, I love you too, mom. And I, I threw her five dollars. And then my son was right behind. What did she give you? What did she give you? I said, I told him, no, no. That's all I had. I love you too, Bob. Mm -hmm. Love you too, Dad. And that was the last time I seen him. Mm -hmm. She moved again. So you haven't had any contact with your kids? The adults? No. Wow. People say, life's a bitch, then you die. Life's a bitch, but you gotta keep fucking it. You got to. You just don't roll over and die. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> it didn't work. <laughs> it doesn't work. Does that mean that you're happy to be alive still? Yes, after I'm, those... I'm cheerful. Yeah. What's something that you wish other people understood about you? Oh, that's simple. Manners. Respect. Honesty, uh, scout honor. I used to be a boy scout, cop scout. So you're saying you wish other people understood that you had those qualities? I wish everybody had them qualities. Fair enough. Because there's people that won't even open a door for a lady. Because they're so mad at themselves. Because mm -hmm. they never had a lie like me. So what's something that others would be surprised to learn about you? My lifestyle. Yeah. Why? 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 Why am I homeless? Why? Do you have an answer? God put me in this God-forsaken world, and I deal with it. That's about the bottom line. Right. I think we're all doing the best we can. Yes. And it shows and in many different ways. it's going to get worse. So what do you think are some of the biggest lessons you've learned in life? Lessons? Mm -hmm. Well, one... You gotta eat to keep surviving. Two, you gotta sleep. That's half of your life, sleeping. Three, your health. Um, if you don't discharge when you go poop, right, something's wrong. And four, your surroundings, who you uh, who you with, because uh, it, it, it means a lot who you with. Either one, you're gonna be free. Either two, you're gonna be incarcerated because of your surroundings. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Do you have any words of advice for anyone going through a hard time? Yeah. Um, always keep your head up. Be positive. Even though, because negativity is always there to trip you. 
Always be positive, no matter what. Always be positive. Even, oh, I cut my hand, well then, first aid. Oh, I tripped, well then get up and dust yourself off and keep walking. Um, and look up at this God, because there is a God. End of story. Were you told about God as a child? Or is that something you learned? Do you mind sharing any stories that led you? Like I say, uh, my grandmother was a witch doctor, mm -hmm. which she had two sisters that were nuns, and they always gave me money and stuff. And uh, I felt unique because nobody ever paid attention to me like they did. The two nuns, mm -hmm. Catholic nuns. So do you think that they played a big part in you finding God? Yes. Later. 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 Because oh, the bad omen has always been after me since I've been a kid. He has always been after me. It might be because of my state of mind and my morals now that God is with me. And every day that I age, he gets closer. Because I do believe. Why do I make crosses now? Why? To share what you learned? No, to give people the remedy that there is a God, inspiration. You know, one day maybe I might give somebody something like you, I gave you something, and you might wake up at the wrong side of the bed or feeling bad, and then you glance over and you see that cross, and you feel better. Does my feet smell? <laughs> no. No. All right, well, now we know the answer to that one. <laughs> Even though I'm homeless, you know what my feet are. Well, that's good. <laughs> they might look ugly, but no, no, my feet look good. You know, that's one thing about me and Christ. He always washed his feet. You know what? Gravity. What holds you up? Your feet. So, your feet, they're prior. I guess that's our connection to the earth that we came from. God's giving you your mm -hmm. feet. Your feet. I'm not making this up. And then if I am, maybe I'm a stupid. Or, but you know what? I clean my feet. My feet are like on. Let me show you one of my feet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to show you one of my feet. <laughs> Would you like me to get this on camera? <laughs> <laughs> I can zoom out. Your <laughs> feet, your feet always. <laughs> yeah. Got the layers. Yeah. Two. <laughs> See? They're clean. Indeed. I mean, I got a little callus there. I need to get off, but they're clean. My nails are clean. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> Well, is there anything else you'd like to share? When I smell my foot. <laughs> no, thank you. I'll, I'll take your word for it. It don't smell. <laughs> it's like mom. I took off her shoes. And that's custom. Mm -hmm. Matachines. You see, my mom, my grandma, and all the clan from Mexico, they're Matachin Indians. And rule, rule, you kiss your mom's feet. Mm. I kiss my mom's feet. That's Matashin, Indian custom. Mm. So what do you think would help you most in this moment? <sighs> A wife. 
a wife. I had my first was the Filipina mm -hmm. for seven years. And then I met uh, uh, 10 years. I broke up with her 2010, the day, the year my dad died. We split because I just didn't want to live in Mexico anymore. No. What the fuck am I doing in Mexico? All them killings and... Oy, 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 oy. I'm a proud American. Yeah. What a wife. Yeah. A companion. Sunflower, if you would have asked me what miracle has come into my life. You want that? Yeah, tell me a miracle. I was in Las Vegas one time, working for a carnival. Mm -hmm. And they would only give you $20 draws a day. What can you get? A pack of cigarettes, a hot dog, and a beer. Beer. Yeah. I worked for about a week, and I said, I'm done. So I figured, I'm done, right? I got my twenty dollars. I went and bought me a beer, cigarettes, and a bag of pork grinds, just to eat something. Mm -hmm. So I'm waiting for a train, right, <laughs> to come into Salt Lake, and uh, oh yeah, I ate them pork grinds in my stomach. I needed to go. And there were two embankments. I don't know why I chose that one. I did. I'm going through brush and there's a tree and boom, something hits me in the forehead. <laughs> I'm like, what? But I needed to go. So I, I did my thing, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, God, thank you. And I said, what hit me? And it was a book. Somebody had tied a book and it was all withered. I mean, withered. It was like, pop. Mm -hmm. So I cut the string off and I took it up. There comes a the train, so I put the, the book in my bag and I got on an open box car. It's, open, it's a classic, this one is. Open box car. Anyways, I slept. By the morning, we're in the outskirts of Salt Lake. Windy, like you wouldn't believe, like a sandstorm. Windy. So, I'm, I'm curiosity, right? I opened up my bag, and I looked. It's a, it's a Bible. It was called. It had on the side a uh, prophecy Bible. And I started reading one of the verses. The dude, whoever had this book had a notepad almost on every other page. Weird. Anyways, I started reading. The train stops. And I get off, and it's windier than a son of a gun. And I'm broke. And I'm hungry because I ate them pork rinds, and they made me, gave me diarrhea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I let everything out, and I'm hungry. My stomach's in the knot. And I'm going, God, you know, Help me. You know, why did I ask? A twenty-dollar bill hit my chest on the windiest day, early morning, seven o'clock in Salt Lake City. A twenty-dollar bill. That's awesome. And I'm going, huh? Thank you, God. Oh, yeah. I went and bought me a beer and cigarettes and something to eat. Well, I kept on. I got another train. I ended up in Wyoming with my dad. And I kept reading this guy. Whoever had this Bible, he must have became awfully holy. He became holy because whatever I was reading, on his verses, it was rubbing off on me. Mm -hmm. Shoot, I was even thinking, is people reading my mind and putting things forth? Or is it really God? I mean, because it was so constant. Mm -hmm. 
I got, within a month, I had a car. I had the, one of the best jobs in town. I had my own apartment. I'm like, and I kept reading, reading, reading his verses. And it just kept getting better and better and better. That's a blessing. That Bible, out of all places in, in Las Vegas, Sin City, hit me in the forehead. <laughs> it hit me, that book hit me right in the forehead and everything like was coming at me. The second day I ended up in Salt Lake City and a $20 bill hit my chest on the windiest day. What the fuck? Explain that. So do you think that that's when you really started believing in God? Yes. He was, until this day, he's right here. He's here. God is good. People don't realize. Well, if you feel good about ending the interview there, then I, I do too. To you, right. I'm indebted. Well, thank you yeah. for doing that with me.